tell you guys since we're since we're all friends. Every character I write has a piece of me in them. Hi, I'm Lee Bardugo, and you're listening to the Grisha Cast. Welcome to Grisha Cast, episode 54. In this episode, we are covering chapters one and two from the book King of Scars. This is your host, Eric. And I'm Terry. From Nashville, Tennessee, this is your podcast for all things Grishaverse. A world created by the wonderful Lee Bardugo. Woohoo! Mars, moist of a you people! <laughs> we back! We are! <laughs> I got a little stumbled there. Wow. <laughs> Out Boy. of practice. I know, it's been a minute. <laughs> it sure has. So, our listener cities, who we got? We have <laughs> Arunakulam, and oh. that is in India. Wow. I said that. <clears throat> you did. <laughs> and then we've got Zimmerman, Minnesota. Hello, Minnesotans. Hey, y'all. Love y'all. Miss y'all. So I haven't been to Min- Zimmerman, Minnesota, but I did live in Minnesota for a while. So what's up? What's up, peeps? I know. So <laughs> for those of you asking how you can help, we would greatly appreciate tips. A dollar goes a long way. Your tips will help us to continue to bring us the Grisha cast. You can Venmo a tip to B-O- at B-O-D-H-I-M-M or Cash at- App. Dollar sign B-O-D-H-I-M-M. Please leave a review on your podcast platform. Liking and following us on our socials, especially our YouTube channel, would also make us so very happy. Yes, it would. Woohoo! So sorry, sorry, we're a little out of practice. It's only a been a month. Bit. <laughs> we're uh, New Year, new us. Exactly. And we mess up. That was funny. <laughs> I was like, hello. Y'all hey. are welcome. <laughs> I was like, where are you? <laughs> hello. Hello, Terry. Yeah, I don't think we fully thought that one through before we it's okay. started. So moving on. Yeah. So um yeah, so first off, we're gonna do some tea. Oh, we've got our own little tea set. We have some tea. Yay! We're gonna start doing that. So you've got your cute little teapot. I do have my cute little teapot, and I've got my teapot, and I'm gonna fill some of my tea <laughs> and make sure that I fill it up because I am parched, <laughs> thirsty. And then we've got our cute little spoon. These are so cute. Fill mine up with some monk fruit because I don't use sugar. No sugar. You, got some... you sweet enough. Aw. You got some chai tea in yours. I do. I have chai tea and some almond milk. I actually did some chai in mine with like a little black tea too. Oh. Just like well. a little, little flavor in there. So um, while we're spilling our tea, how mm-hmm. was um the past month? Oh, yeah, y'all. It's been a long time. Mm-hmm. There's been a lot of stuff going down. Always. <laughs> I mean, it's been a month since we've seen you all. We're in a new year. A lot has been happening. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're in a whole new year. It's going to be better, right? <laughs> we <laughs> no, hope. It's like we're in month 13 of 2020. Um, so January's is not going to count. And maybe we'll just start over in February. I- well- <laughs> We'll count down on January 31st. <laughs> I just don't know, and I'm just not counting. I'm just, um, I have no clue what's going to happen. I don't, um, and I've decided that I used to, like, pray and think that, like, okay, it's going to get over. We're going to get to a better thing um, next year. And then, no, things haven't gotten any better. So I'm just, I'm, I'm just living each day and just doing what we got to do. And Grisha Cast will go on, and the important things will go on, and we will be here. Got to keep that positive attitude. Exactly. Mm-hmm. We've got you guys, and we've got people that appreciate fantasy and getting out of like you know politics and all that stuff, and just trying to like look at some of the happier things in life, um, and things that'll help you. You know, I mean, reading, taking yourself to a different world, or just. Watching a Netflix show in April. Yes, so that's coming up. <laughs> We've got a lot of cool things yes, to look we forward do. to. But we have no clue what the future holds. Um, hopefully some brighter stuff. Um, Surely. Definitely. Um, yeah, for those of you that um, aren't in the U.S., I'm sure 
you you're know. laughing at us. <laughs> well, I'm also sure that you know that um, things are changing for us. So um, you probably know what's happening. And, you know, we don't really need to get into all of that because y'all are living it all the time. But um, yay. <laughs> Think about us. <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah. Keep us in your thoughts and prayers. Yeah. Because we need it. <laughs> we do. We really do. I wish I could. Yeah. I. Yep. Um. <laughs> so I don't even know like what to even like talk about because I feel like it's been a really long time, but I've done nothing but like sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. I mean, it went out there that I finally caught <laughs> COVID. Yes. I don't know how. Honestly, 100% do not know how. I am one of the most careful people in the entire universe. Um, so, no idea. But, um, yeah, it, it was a lot of sleeping. Lots of sleeping. And I'm still sleeping a lot. And I feel like that's all I've done. <laughs> well, that is all I do. And ever <laughs> since I caught COVID, same thing happened. So, I think it's kind of part of it. I, I think, guess so. Um, I know that I'm not completely over my stuff, and um, I still can't smell or taste everything. There are things I can and can't smell. Um, my birthday cake, I was really excited That's about. So sad. <laughs> I um, I would eat it, but every time it was kind of like a guessing game. Sometimes I taste it, sometimes I wouldn't. <laughs> so I ate the entire birthday cake just in hopes of the couple of times I was able to taste it, and probably for the texture. Yeah. It just, it was really sad. So there's, it's weird. So at least I can now smell and taste some things. That's good. Yeah, it's different. I um, I just haven't figured it out yet. I haven't. Um, But, you know, hopefully things will get better. I, hopefully, yeah, <laughs> my work is at this weird thing where we're, um, we're back doing where they closed down our court so now like i work one week and don't work the next and then i work one week so that's how we're doing it so it's just weird and then um everything going on in our country is just so scary and um i just yeah it's just so weird i am um, it's a good time to just hole up in your comforter <laughs> and just enjoy books and TV and your family. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. your friends. Yeah. And our Grisha cast. Um, but yeah, I never lost my smell or my taste, but it changed. Yeah. So there's like certain things that are disgusting now, like tomatoes, because that taste diminished. So they actually just have they just have like this weird smooshy texture now. Um, I don't really have any taste, which makes me sad because I used to love tomatoes. And other things are like heightened. Like there are certain other foods that like are more flavorful. Hmm. So it's very strange. Um, and I'm smelling weird things. <laughs> like I'm, I smell cigarette smoke in like weird times that I shouldn't be smelling it. Or smell ammonia or I don't know. It's very strange. I, I'm, I didn't lose it all. Yeah. Which, I mean, good or bad, because if when I was in bed all day, I just wanted to comfort eat. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess that's probably the bad side of still having my taste buds. <laughs> just sit and eat. Yeah, that's what you can do. <laughs> I make myself feel better with some chocolate. <laughs> oh my God, yes. There are some good things with like chocolate and ugh. There's some good keto chocolate I've been enjoying recently. So oh. that's nice. And yeah, it's just a really weird world we live in. Thank God we've got some of this stuff um, going on. I mean, I've had some great books I've been reading, some good art I've been working on, things I've been like helping me. And um, I don't know. I, I've been enjoying that a lot, trying to get some peace and calm and um, just trying to just be at peace because everything is so crazy right now and it's hard and I've got some people close to me at work that have people close people that are 
dying from COVID, and that's very hard. Um, a close friend of mine right now at work, and um, I'm sending all prayer and light to her. She is dealing with a very hard situation of her mother that is the only person she has in the world that um, caught COVID, and COVID is killing her. And um, she can't see her. She can't go in there. Um, and it's it's a very hard situation. She's only in her 20s. And she's just got her four-year-old child, and I love her to death, and she is so sweet. And I, it's just hard because you've got people out there that are still saying that this is a hoax and that this isn't real, and um, that is disheartening and scary. And I'm saying this because I think that our listeners – um, if you're listening to this podcast because you lit, you love what we do, um, you're okay with uh, a gay guy and a bisexual woman discussing a series that you most likely believe on the same wavelength as us. And um, I, I hope that that is, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn because I believe that we really do think about the same things and have the same things at heart. So um, I I feel like I'm talking to an audience that gets me, and I hope I'm um, helping some people out there that might not have that because I know that there's a lot of people out there that can feel lonely and that they're only ones who can be in a small little town and not know any gay people or not know anybody that's reading the Grisha verse or feel alone in so many different ways, and I want you to know that you're not. And... um. This world we live in can very much feel like that and don't feel that way. We are here. Um, if we skip a week and you need us, you can. we give out our socials at the end of every episode. You've got our emails. We are always here. We would love to talk to you and um, let you know that you're not alone. And um, things are going to get better. I promise they will. They just have to get hard, unfortunately. But we'll get through that. So thanks for letting me share about that. It's just um, some stuff's have it weighing heavy on my heart and I would feel kind of crappy if I didn't share it because as we've said before this is a podcast for our people and our people love us because of who we are and I'm not gonna hold back on my thoughts and my feelings because I know that the people that listen to us are the people that are like-minded and that's why we have such a big following so Thank you guys. We love you. We consider you all friends, and that's why you listen. So, um, anyways, I hope this New Year's better for all of us. We need it. We really do. Um, but besides, my week hasn't been anything. I just sit around and read <laughs> and do artwork. So and sleep. But what's amazing is we have gotten into King of Scars, which is so exciting. I was. I mean. I know y'all know that I loved the Crow series so much that I have to admit that I was a little sad. Yeah. Okay, a lot sad. Okay, really, really, really sad to like see it go. Um, and so I started this book with a lot of trepidation. Like I'm, I'm interested in the story continuing, but I know I'm going to <laughs> miss that whole universe the yeah and i know i know i know certain things continue on and whatever else but it's not the same well no yeah <laughs> you missed the ketterdam story you missed the yeah the gritty yes london-esque like <laughs> yes. quality of it um but uh yeah i went actually forward farther than the two chapters mm -hmm. that we did today so um obviously i did get into it it wasn't like did a you? difficult yes yeah it wasn't a difficult read and i'm i uh it wasn't difficult for me to like get into it thankfully so um uh, i don't know how much i want to say once a certain part came back into it then it was an easier transition for me chapter three i will say i guess once i got through chapter three then i was like all right okay so once you got nina <laughs> yes <laughs> pretty much once i got through um nina's chapter then i felt a little more at home <laughs> so 
I'm excited because this is our first novel that she's written where she is combining everything she's written before, um, as in the trilogy and then the Six of Crows duology. It is incredible. Um, I think she melds both worlds very well. I mean, characters Mm -hmm. um, brings them in. I love all of the tidbits of Easter (laughs) eggs, if you've read everything else. I love that. I love the Easter eggs. And I'm still confused because she says that, like, she's written this so many people have many entrances into the Grishaverse. This book included. I... I understand how you could read this book and understand it, but there are so many Easter eggs that you would like. Right, yeah. That, like, I feel like it'd be boring because there's exciting parts. They bring up Alina so much. They bring up, and it just gets, oh, my God, wait till you get to the ending. (laughs) Sorry, I mean, (laughs) so it's just, this is really good. And as we know, this is a duology in the next book, um, Rule of Wolves. Comes out yes. March 30th, my bar mitzvah anniversary. Woo! I had that when I was 13. I'm not going to do the math, <laughs> but it was a long time ago. But um, yeah, so we'll see how far we are along then. Yeah. Um, I doubt we will be at the end of this book the way that we're going. No. I wish that we could, but we're kind of trying to take it slow so it's yes. easy for you guys. And um, we are going to actually have people come in as guests this time we've said that for a while but we actually do we've got some lined up we're just trying to get some schedules figured out yeah so just people to come in if you are interested um and have been on our socials and we do know who you are and things like that then yeah and you're interested let us know if we don't know you let us know um (laughs) we'll we'll figure something out we love to be able to get in touch with all of you guys and um as we know we have to get ready. The Grishaverse is about to expand because the show is coming out. So we're going to have to deal with um, people that don't know, haven't read the books, um, but are all of a sudden going to start flooding the bookstores, trying to oh, get copies. I know how that goes. They're going to all of a sudden start learning about it. So just let's all get ready. We have all been there. We're not going to be mean. Mm-mm. We are going to accept them. They are just learning. And you know what? It's going to be great. So let's just be optimistic. But we got a show to do. (laughs) Ding, ding, ding. (laughs) Let's do it. I'm sure you all have missed us. So um, hope you guys are enjoying our tea. This tea set is by T2 Australia. These are gorgeous pieces. I have, I feel like I'm. God, I feel like I'm on that show that we did the commercial for. QVC? Yeah, but, but the, the yeah, Grisha the, version of it. Yes. These are by T2 Australia, and these are gorgeous pieces. Not you, sponsored. Yes, not <laughs> sponsored. If we got them as a sponsor, girl. Shout woo! out. God, I love it. <laughs> We'd sip some real tea. Well, we're going to start. The, we're going to always be drinking tea now. It's going to be tea. We're calling our little beginning segment. I didn't even talk to Terry about this too much, so I hope it's okay. But I want to call it Tea for Two, right when we're discussing, you know, our crap, how our day's gone, what's going on. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we randomly got into tea at the same time, separately, yeah, over the she's, break. she stopped drinking coffee. I stopped drinking coffee. I say that I'm sober from coffee now. Um, mm. Yeah. So, <laughs> Girl. so I got into tea, and he got, it just happened to be that way. So Girl, here we go. This will be our meeting. I'll give out coins at the beginning. We'll give you out <laughs> booklets. 12-step program. And it's hard. Men- yep. We'll say the serenity <laughs> prayer at the end. Yes. God bless. Okay. Um, so we're going to start off. Um, this started off differently. Did it? To me, it did. Because usually from what I've read, the beginnings have more to do with the story than this did. You it gotta, does have to do with the story. But so little. Like every book always has a random character that has nothing to do with anything else. And something in it happens that's like a foreshadowing. I know, but you've got it. But like this, in the tide. But thing. Dima's story, it's about a farm. It's we, 
never visit this farm. The only thing that's taken away from it is the end. Like, I mean, you know, like, so think about it in like the beginning of Six of Crows. We were at what's his name, like, house and the guards and like getting to meet the, and then we find out about like the Grisha that was stuck inside like the glass and all that. And that comes out of the end. Like, this is just like, it's a small little story about like, you know, it just, it doesn't have much to do with it except for at the very end, right? Sort of. Okay, well, let's get let's get into it. We I can talk. It, I thought it like mixed in well with the rest of the. It does series. Like it's very similar. Okay, okay. Well, go for a girl. So <laughs> we're starting off. It's um the drowning, the drowning man is the um beginning of this um story. So that's um, yeah, not the chapter, but the drowning man section. The section. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So chapter one, Dima. Dima is an eight-year-old boy who lives on a farm with his big giant family. There is a storm, a lot of wind, causing a lot of noises outside, and the family is discussing who should go tend to the barn doors that are now flapping open, and we learn a few fun things while they're arguing back and forth. We learn that St. Felix, yes, who had been impaled on a spit of apple boughs and cooked mm-hmm. alive after he's he performed some sort of miracle in the orchards. He apparently hadn't screamed, and he just asked to be turned over so the flames could reach the other side. Ding, ding, ding. You will learn more about that yeah. in, the, in the book she I wrote. literally put that in there for you. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. There's a lot more about that. Start, um, start paying attention to just a little hint. If you haven't read these books, in this book, even if there's a line about the saints, just like put that like as a little like sticky note <laughs> for mark. yourself um, because they have stuff to do with this story. I'm not talking about the other stories. They do have like stuff to do with it. So just kind of like remember a little bit about it. <laughs> um, we also hear that Dima's mom thinks that there's going to be another civil war because she thinks that King Nikolai was too rash because he cut Duke Radimov's tithe to hardly anything. And she thinks the Duke is going to murder him in his sleep. His dad doesn't agree. Hmm. So Dima is deemed the person responsible for seeing to the barn doors. He goes out there and he smells blood. Not a fun smell to go. No, it smells like like, like pennies. Yes, coppery. Yeah. And then something moves. He calls it a shadow, so that's what we're going to call it. It's wearing shredded remains of clothing. The quote Ooh. is, its eyes were mirror black and dark veins spread to its clawed fingertips as if its hands had been dipped in ink. The tendrils of shadow tracing its skin seem to pulse. Sounds like quote. a bad night at play, girl. <laughs> Sorry. Church Street. Church. <laughs> At, at two o'clock in the morning, at 2 honey, a.m. <laughs> you just hanging on to every bit of clothes you got. So With your I mean, busted heels and your hot dog from the vendor, <laughs> but you still feel fabulous. So I mean, sachet chante. Woo! So the shadow also has wings and dark blood stains all around its mouth and chest. See, it was Halloween night. <laughs> as soon as the shadow was about to pounce on Dima with its fangs, someone else walked into the barn. Another quote, a figure strode into the barn in a drab gray coat, a strange wind lifting her long black hair. The moon caught her features and Dima cried harder because she was too beautiful to be any ordinary person. And that meant she must be a saint. He had died and she had come to escort him to the bright lands, end quote. Interesting, real quickly. Yeah. Um. Have we had a lot of discussion about what they believe happens after death? Because she just, like, I mean, he just had to mention, like, okay, to the bright he, side, to, to the bright lion. Yeah. To, like, I'm, I I'm just saying, like, had I hadn't heard that before. No, we haven't had like a. Okay. That's mm-hmm. just interesting. Yeah. So there is something with the religion. We don't have a specific religion. We know no. they believe in saint, saints and sanctas and all that, but um. There is an afterlife called the Brightlands. Okay, interesting. It's bright. It is. Is it like follow the light? Instead, though, she went over to the shadow and kicked it onto its side, put shackles 
over its clawed hands. It's like snapping at her, but she mm. just reaches over and like swats it on the nose. <laughs> the Bad saint dog. is like tugging on the chains and producing wind to control it so it can't fly. Dima realizes the saint is actually a Grisha. The Grisha leads the shadow into a large coach and throws money at Dima for the damages. Dima was surprised, though, when the coachman didn't seem upset because he actually said, watch your head, your highness. The end. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Did it actually say Grisha in here? Yes. Really? So it, it like it actually mentioned that she was a Grisha? Yes. It wasn't something to come up with? It was, okay. It's like the last page. It's Oh, your book is different than mine. It's, it was on. Oh, yeah. This is the new one, girls. Um, this is the new one that came out, paperback, um, with the teal. It's very pretty. It's beautiful. Check out the Instagram. I took pictures of it nonstop because <laughs> I thought it was pretty. Okay, so they did mention um, that yes. Grisha was up in there. Yes. But, yeah, the killer line, at the very last line is, watch your head, your, your highness. Your highness. Yeah. So something really cool about this book, um, haven't looked back at the other books to see if she did this. But um, in her fashion, she always, like, her stories have, instead of, like, chapter names, it's someone's name. Um, each one, Zo like, I mean, if you look at Zoya or if you look at Dima, they all have different graphics that have to do with specifically them. Dima has wings, for instance, okay? So his story, it's not about Dima, but it's the fact that, I mean, you're never going to hear from Dima again. But I'm guessing those are the wings of the shadow monster. If you look at Zoya, it's a heart. She's a heart renderer. It's not Zoya. I mean, sorry, I was looking at Nina real quickly. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I was looking at chapter three by accident. Nina, she's got a heart. That's a heart renderer. Yes, it's the same. Yeah. In the hardback copy. And then Zoya, she's got the, the circle and the wind yeah. motions. So something kind of cool that she that Lee actually put a lot in thought into. I um, read about that. So there's just some neat things. Like Nikolai, his has those double eagles, which are specific. And um, there's a lot of little graphics about the double eagles that when we get further into, I'll tell you more about. But you can't tell from these small pictures. But like in the double eagle, the right side, like, the claws, they're actually holding on to three arrows, and the three arrows are representations of the three different types of Grisha. Like, I mean, it's very interesting. Like, there's a lot of detail in them, um, but you can't tell unless you see big pictures of it. So, um, just to let you know, you can tell it from the big. Yeah. Yep. The big copy, you can see it. Um, but I love how much detail is put into this stuff, and... Um, yeah, it's amazing. So, anyways, we're going to move on. Um, by the way, I made a, a little bookmark for myself. I'll show you guys later. Yeah, we've got, we got a show to do. I got talking to do. I, I, was, letting, I was enjoying myself while he, she had her spot. And now I got to <laughs> do my stuff. So, um... Okay, so we're entering now into Zoya, which, if you know me, Zoya's my favorite girl, <laughs> um, especially from this book. This is where I, I fell in love with Zoya because you'll just see, because she's just, she's beautiful. And she just, um, one, I love the ending of the trilogy. She, like, really, like, she got to the good side. She still was such a hard ass if that's okay for me to say. Um, she just, she's awesome. And in this story, it's amazing. So um, anyways, I um, start this off. Obviously, I, I like to start it off with the very beginning of what Lee writes. So beginning of chapter two, Zoya. The stink of, of blood hung heavy in the coach. Zoya pressed her sleeve to her nose to ward off the smell, but the musty odor of dirty wool wasn't much improvement. Vile. It was bad enough that she had to go tearing off across Ravkin 
countryside in the dead of night in a borrowed, badly sprung coach, but that she had to do so in a garment like this? Unacceptable. She stripped the coat from her body. The stench still clung to the silk of her embroidered blue kefta beneath, but she felt a bit more like herself now. Okay, end quote. So, Zoya has just rescued the little boy Dima from being eaten by, as we know who that is, Nikolai, who is in his monstrous form that the Darkling cast on him all the way back into the Shadow and Bone trilogy. Nikolai is chained to one side of the carriage and Zoya is safely on the other. Zoya is praying that no one saw Nikolai escape. They are not in Azalta, but they are staying at the state of Duke Radimov, their host for the trade summit, which is nearly 100 miles away from the capital. Nikolai's monster is biting with his teeth and being just all monstrous <laughs> on his um, cool. side of the carriage, um, trying to get free, of course. I mean, he's just this monster. We don't know a lot about him. Um, we don't know whether he's like, Feeling like Nikolai, but I'm assuming not because it seems like he's wanting to, like, kill her. I mean, anyways. So, quote, Zoya kept her distance. She'd seen what one of Nikolai's bites could do when he was in this state, and she had no interest in losing a limb or worse. Part of her had wanted to ask Toya or Tamar, the brother and sister, who served as the king's personal guards, to ride inside the carriage with her until Nikolai resumed his human form. Their father had been a shoe mercenary who had trained them to fight. Their mother, a Grisha, from whom they'd both inherited heart-render gifts. The presence of either twin would have been welcome, but her pride prevented it, and she also knew what it would cost the king. One witness to his misery would be bad enough. End quote. Uh, eventually, the noises of the monster disappear slowly, and then all of a sudden, Nikolai's voice comes up and asks Zoya for a change of clothes. So he is changed back to him himself. Zoya unlocks his change with a key she holds around her neck. We found out that Nikolai has scarring from the Darkling's curse, especially in his veins. It's like on his hands, and they're black. Um, it's just black, the coloring of the curse that's kind of like left inside of I mean, we're still kind of figuring this whole thing out that happened to him. Um, it wasn't completely explained at the end of the trilogy. Am I right? Yeah, it was the... Um... The shadow figures. Right, but it's different in the fact that he isn't just right. the shadow figure. Right. He turns into them, but yes, he turns it, like, back. There's... Entered him for in some manner. Right. And then somehow he was able to come back to himself. So it's it's different where like we just don't know all the properties of it yet. I uh, know. Um, but yes, there's a lot that's in common with it and one part is like, I mean, it kind of leaves parts of him where like his veins on his hands stay black um, or he and he likes to cover that up with a glove. So Nikolai asks where she had um, found him and she tells it. So I guess he doesn't remember when he goes off on these adventures and she tells him that he was at a goose farm. And he also asks about who or what he had killed. And she doesn't exactly know for sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. She doesn't know exactly for sure. But she does tell him most likely a lot of geese, possibly a shaggy pony. Um, they will just have to wait until the reports come in within the next couple of days and hope that it's not a person. Almost or, a little boy and his puppy. <laughs> right. Um, so they're not really sure. They no. see blood, but they're not sure whose blood it was. Um, and unfortunately, during these episodes, he does not remember any of it. He has flashes of what he says. Um, and I'm guessing these flashes are not enough to be able to put together a story. So um, next quote. The trouble had begun six months earlier when Nikolai had woken in a field nearly 13. 30 miles from Oz Alta, bloodied and covered in bruises with no memory of how he'd gotten out of the palace or what he'd done in the night. I seem to have taken up sleepwalking, 
he declared to Zoya and the rest of the Grisha triumphant when he'd sauntered in late to their morning meeting, a long scratch down his cheek, end quote. So um, there's a little history of how long it's been taking, of long how, how long it's been going on. A month later, Toya was guarding the king's chamber when he heard glass break and opens the door just in time to see Nikolai jump from his bedroom window and fly into the sky with his shadowy-looking window wings. So this is just kind of like a little history of what's been going on, of how they discovered this, okay? They tracked him down on the roof of a granary about 15 miles away. Here's another quote. After that, they had started chaining the king to his bed, an effective solution workable only because Nikolai's servants weren't permitted into his palace bedchamber. The king was a war, eager, war, a war hero, after all, and known to suffer nightmares. Zoya had locked him in every night since and released him every morning, and they'd kept Nikolai's secret safe. Only Toya... Tamar and the triumvirate knew the truth. If anyone discovered the king of Ravka spent his nights trust in a in chains, he'd be a perfect target for assassination or a coup, not to mention a laughing stock. That was what made travel so dangerous. But Nikolai couldn't stay sequestered behind the walls of Al Alta Al Alta forever. End quote. So we know that. Nikolai couldn't stop traveling, so they start giving him a powerful sedative made by Jenya that helps the king and his monster stay tucked into bed while he's on his sleepovers. And um, so we're back into present tense where we are back in this coach. Nikolai tells Zoya um, that Jenya is going to have to start making the tonic stronger, obviously. Um, since he got out. So far, the king has only killed livestock, but with the curse getting stronger, they're getting a little worried that these midnight snacks won't be limited to the after-hours menu. So, the driver announces to the king and Zoya that they are almost to the bridge. Um, and what is this bridge that they're um, <laughs> wanting to be told about? Well, it's Ravka's latest miracle! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here is the quote, which goes a little further into it. A week ago, the villagers in Yvette had set out behind Duke Radimov's ribbon festoon cart to celebrate the festival of Sankt Grigori. Banging drums and playing with harps meant to mimic the instrument Grigori had fashioned to soothe the beasts of the forest before his martyrdom. But when they'd reached the Obol, the wooden bridge that spanned the river gorge had given way before the duke and his vessels could plummet to the raging white water below, another bridge had sprung up beneath them seeming to bloom from the very walls of the chasm and the jagged rocks of the canyon floor, or so the reports had claimed. Zoya had put little stock in the tales, chalked them up to exaggeration, maybe even mass delusion, until she'd seen the bridge for herself. So, real quickly, end quote. Obviously, so there's these, this town walking across this bridge. It disappears. The people should plummet but what happens another bridge forms right as like at that moment okay that's a miracle okay that's weird so let's go further so they're about to cross this bridge because they're gonna see what this bridge looks like i mean so zoya peers out the window to see the bridge in the moonlight, it looks like it would not be made out of alabaster, which is, you know, this white, shiny, like, hard substance. They get to the bridge and begin to cross it slowly. The bridge is actually made out of drone, bone, and gristle. Mm. Um, yeah. Love me a gristly bridge. Mm. <laughs> um, at one point, they feel the carriage kind of thump, thump, thumping. And it's rolling over someone, a bot, a, 
a spine. <laughs> Somebody's spine. I don't know where these dead bones came from. I'm guessing they're human bones, but it's rolling over a skeleton spine. Mm. Um, that's what it's rolling over. Nikolai ponders with Zoya what really is going on with these miracles. Okay, so now we get a little history of what's been going on. Besides this bridge, there was also an earthquake in Rivost, and it wasn't just an earthquake. The earth split, and these birds shot out of it, um, like just flew out of the ground. There was a statue of Sancta Anastasia um, from Semna, and she was found crying tears of blood. Which actually is so interesting if you've read the <laughs> Book of Saints um, because all of this makes so much sense. It's just so neat. Um, anyways, Zoya thinks it could possibly be Grisha on Parem. Um, that's her answer to it. I think she's pertaining specifically to the bridge because of seeing the ice cords and things like that. She knows that um, Grisha on Parem can create anything and do things that are very out of their power. So Parem can do special things, but, I mean, supposedly Parem is not around. But, anyways. So, uh, we see the real reason they are actually on this trip was to investigate this. Um, and because they had this little inkling that, because Nikolai's curse, these, like, him flying around and turning into this monster happened exactly at the same time that these miracles started happening around these little these little towns, these miracles. So they're kind of checking it out, just seeing if there's any coincidence. Nikolai wants to get back to Azalta so that they can give David the sample from the bridge and see if he discovers anything. And Zoya reminds him that there's one more day of the summit. Zoya has this little secret reason for wanting the king to stay there, and that's because she wants to ma play matchmaker. Um, Hiram Shank has some daughters that are going to be at the summit, and she just thinks it's really important that Nikolai get married. And Nikolai mentions that they need to go before Shank and ask him more questions about is Maria. Okay, so here's a quote. Is Maria were sh ships that traveled beneath the surface of the water. They would be vital to Ravka's survival as Fjordan Navy grew, especially if Nikolai could arm them as he had planned. Okay, so there's a little political stuff going on, and just wanted to make sure I cleared that up. So besides Hiram Shank being there, he's actually there, and um, Nikolai had a conversation with him that he was trying to like pester him about this little project that Nikolai had going on and Nikolai was trying to get out of it because he didn't want to give away too much information pretty much he's making up these like little submarines that are his new toy and he doesn't want to give away too much information Nina's point was she wants to like get him racked up with another girl so it could help it could help their kingdom um help him so that way he's got like he's just got someone and she's and this Hiram Shank has some eligible daughters um so anyways moving on um we pretty much are at the coach driver alerts Nikolai and Zoya that they are coming back to the gates of Duke Radimov's of state so this is the end of the chapter end of the scene and we are gonna do it we haven't done a scene in a while because we haven't been here. <laughs> so Terry is going to play Nikolai. I'm going to play Zoya. And for our special guest, Ooh. we've got Christopher playing the guard. Producer Chris. Yes. So, Chris, are you ready? Okay, <laughs> I didn't hear anything except <laughs> mumbling, so I'm hoping that was, I've got my script ready, and I'm ready to read. I'm so, ready. Let's do this. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Can our can everybody hear you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know. Sometimes you talk to me and you talk to Terry, and we have no clue because we respond to you. And I don't think you're on there the whole time. 
So sometimes I think Terry and I are just talking to like. No, that's the magic of being a producer. Nobody can hear me unless I want them to. <laughs> so every time that we talk to you, they can't hear you? Exactly. I'm talking to your ear. Oh. Yes. Yeah, Here. like the time when I was like throwing the stars at the camera and in our ear, he said, don't hit the camera. And we were like, we're not. But like all anyone else heard was, we're not. <laughs> yeah, so um, <laughs> Terry and I just look crazy. That's fine. Totally I'm okay fine. with that at this point. Yeah, there are certainly worse things. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so let's um finish this off. Um, So real quickly, a special thanks for our background music created by Kendra Dantes and produced by Year 26. Real quickly, Kendra Dantes had, has done so much for her career. She's She's been really getting out there. She's won some awards, and I just wanted to let you know, if you haven't checked her out, go onto her YouTube page. She really is an incredible, incredible artist with amazing voice, and um, yeah, she's definitely worth looking into. So um, anyways, congrats, Kendra. And um, thank you for um, helping us have some beautiful background music. So, um, okay. Well, we are going to do our scene. And yeah. So, okay. Curtain up. Zoya took a second flask from the pack and dabbed the whiskey at her pulse points like perfume before handing it to Nikolai, who took a long swig, then splashed the rest liberally over her coat. Zoya ruffled her hair, let her kafta slip from one shoulder, and eased it into the king's arm. The charade was necessary, and it was an e easy role to play, sometimes too easy. He buried his face in her hair, inhaling deeply. How is it I smell like goose shit and cheap whiskey, and you smell like you just ran through a meadow of wildflowers? Ruthlessness. He breathed in again. What is that scent? It reminds me of something, but I can't place what. The last child you're trying to eat. That must be it. The door to the coach flew open. Your Highness, we hadn't realized you'd gone out tonight. Zoya couldn't see the guard's face, but she could hear the suspicion in his voice. Your king is not in the habit of asking for anything, least of all permission, said Nikolai, his voice lazy but with the disdainful edge of a monarch who knew nothing but easy gratification. Of course, of course, said the guard. We had only your safety in my mind, my king. Zoya doubled in. Western Ravka had bridled under the new taxes and laws that had come with unification. These guards might wear the double eagle, but their loyalty belonged to the duke who ran this estate and who had thrown up opposition to Nikolai's rule at every turn. No doubt their master would be thrilled to uncover the king's secrets. Zoya summoned her most plaintive tone and said, Why aren't we moving? She sensed the shift in their interest. A good night, then, said the guard, and she could almost see him peering into the coach to get a better look. Zoya tossed her long hair and said with the sleepy, tousled sound of a woman well tumbled, a very good night. She only play with royals, said the guard. She looks like fun. Zoya felt Nikolai tense. She was both touched and annoyed that he thought she cared what some buffoon believed, but... There was no need to play at chivalry tonight. She cast the guard a long look and said, You have no idea. He chortled and waved them through. As the coach rolled on, Zoya felt the faint tremor of Nikolai's transformation still echoing through him and her own exhaustion creeping over her. It would be too easy to let her eyes close, to rest her head against his chest and give in to the illusion of comfort. But the price for such indulgence would be too high. Eventually the monster will be found out, she said. We've had no luck in finding a cure, even a hint of one. Marry, forge an alliance, make an heir, secure the throne in Ravka's future. I will, he said warily. I'll do all of it, but not tonight. Tonight, let's pretend we're an old married couple. If any other man had said such a thing, she would have punched him in the jaw. 
or possibly taken him to bed for a few hours. And what does that entail? We'll tell each other lies, as married couples do. It will be a good game. Go on, wife. Tell me I'm a handsome fellow who will never age and who will die with all of his own teeth in his head. Make me believe it. I will not. I understand. You've never had a talent for deception. Zoya knew he was goading her, but her pride pricked anyway. How can you be so sure? Perhaps the list of many talents is so long you just haven't gotten to the end. Go on then, Nazulinsky. Dearest husband, she said, making her voice honey sweet. Did you know the woman of my family can see the future in the stars? He huffed a laugh. <laughs> I did not. Oh, yes. I've even seen your fate in the constellations. You will grow old, fat, and happy. Father many badly behaved children, and future generations will tell your ch story in legend and song. Very convincing, Nikolai said. You're good at this game. A long silence followed, filled with nothing but the rattling of the coach wheels. Now tell me I'll find a way out of this. Tell me it will be all right. His tone was merry, teasing, but Zoya knew him too well. It will be all right she said with all the conviction she could muster. We'll solve this problem as we've solved all the others before. She tilted her head up to look at him. His eyes were closed. A worried crease marred his brow. Do you believe me? Yes. She pushed away from him and straightened her clothes. Falsehoods were inevitable, maybe even necessary between a husband and wife. A general and her king could ill afford them. See, she said, you're good at this game, too. So, Mazel tov. <laughs> End of the scene, end of chapter. It was a good beginning. Yeah. I am just saying, I, I'm so excited to be back with Zanya. Zoya. Zanya? <laughs> Whoa, what did I like? Zanya and Zoya. Yeah, together. I really am excited for Zoya just because this is this book is her time to shine. Um, we learned for those of you out there that I've read, you know, I mean, there's every book you learn more about the Grisha, but like you just this book gets it brings more and more into Grisha power. We learn so much and how things change and it's just it's so cool. I I love that so I'm so excited. Um but it's that time for Grisha Castos <laughs> Sorry, I was really excited. Did you even get to say anything? And then I got scared. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was so excited. We haven't done it for like a month. <laughs> Grisha Cost News. So. I was like, Grisha. <laughs> we haven't done it in forever. So <sighs> please excuse us if we forget stuff. We're trying to like, I mean. We got to get back in the groove. Yeah, it was a lot. Um, <laughs> I think the main thing was we got our first teaser. Yes. Which was really cool. How many people watched it a hundred times? Me. How about the music? Me. <laughs> um, it's really exciting. I I want so much more. Yes. I, I love the fact that we at least have a month. <laughs> we don't know a date, but we know that yeah. it comes out in April. So that's really exciting. Um, so you guys get excited because that means you're gonna get Grisha Cast twice a week. Ooh. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> But you listen to us, so obviously you want it. So um, that's going to be cool. Um, yeah, that was really exciting, which means, I mean, just we're going to get more and more and more. Um, it seems like a lot's going to be happening because at the very end of March, she's going to release um, Rule of Wolves. And then in April sometime, we'll know the date by then, she's going to be releasing the, well, she's not, but Netflix will be releasing the show. Yeah. It's so much. <laughs> so it's very exciting. Um, the beautiful um, new paperback of King of Scars came out. 
Um, I love it. I put it all over my Instagram. I'm not going to show it on here because it didn't show it, but it like it's just got a beautiful teal cover. Um, I you love showed it. it earlier. Yeah, it's it's gorgeous. <laughs> um, Chris on Christmas, which I don't even celebrate, but we were um, Christmas Day. We got back from like our cabin, and all my pre order gifts came in. If you listen to this podcast, I kept on freaking out that I did too many. <laughs> like entries into it and was scared I wasn't going to get it, but I got all my pre gift. Yay. Yeah, I got the cute little pencil case with the pen pencils in it. I got my um made in Rafka patch that I want to put on something, but I have nowhere to put it on. And this cute sticker that oh. Maybe I'll go on my laptop. <laughs> um but still like glad that stuff came through. So we got some cool stuff. Um, yeah, um, that's just the first teaser, and that came out last month. So we got we're gonna have more stuff coming, obviously soon. Um, anyways, we um we got some listener thank yous. So thank you so much for sending messages. Those mean so much to us. Um, want to start with Je- this is all from Instagram. Jelly Design Studio, thank you so much. We're so glad that... Um, oh, and girl, she drinks tea, too, while listening <laughs> to our podcast. So I just want to say that, like, you were thinking the same thing I was. Because, like, right when I saw that, I was like, oh, my God, we're about to do that in our show. So, um, anyways, congrats, girl. Drink tea <laughs> while listening to Grisha Gas. We're going to make it a part of how we enter the show. So, uh, anyways... Jelly Designs and Studio and I are on the same wavelength. So, <laughs> perfect. We'll have to talk more about tea. Uh, also, Side Reads, thank you so much for your message. Um, it meant a lot. Um, I'm not going to get into it because um, your message was very just like, it was for us. And um, just want to let you know we're here for you. We love you. And, um, yeah, if you ever need us, um, reach out. I am... I know that I've not been the best at um, responding and I'm sorry because I get so excited that I like read them and then I read them at work and then like I get in trouble at work for doing things on my phone I'm not (laughs) supposed to and then I forget. So it's please, um, I'm going to get better at like not checking that stuff while I'm at work. So um, love you. Thank you so much for um, just listening to us and we're glad that we can bring some happiness into your life and um, yeah, we'll bring more. Keep messaging us. We love you, and we're here for you. So, um, hear you loud and clear. So, um, thank. We're just we're blessed to know that we can bring you that happiness. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and from Twitter and our mail info at grishacast dot com, <laughs> we want to say thank you to Marta. Uh, thanks, Marta. <laughs> thank we, you, Marta. We love her. She we mentions, do. Yes. We, uh, we're glad that we shouted out your listener city. Yeah. And glad that you agree that Tommy and Kaz are very similar. Mm-hmm. So we're on the same wavelength. <laughs> yeah. She, she's she been a longtime listener. Yeah. She has sent us stuff, and I love Marta. So thank you, Marta. We're virtual book friends. Yeah. And That's what she said. And doesn't she have, like, a uh, Fear to Mary Kill for us? She does. Okay. But before we get into that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> for the shout outs, I want to say thank you to everyone who wished me all the get well wishes. Yes, because that was so unexpected. Yes. We didn't expect Terry to get. Oh, my God. Yeah. But I mean, I. Yeah. Go. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> So the first name, Z-X-N-N-O-L-I. I don't want to butcher that, so I will spell it out. Um, Ms. Elizabeth Wrights, K.R. Wyland, Sunday Ray, Kasberg, Sid Reeds, Robin C. Farrell, and Angela. Thank you so very much for your get well wishes. It makes my heart happy. Thank you. Thank you. From her best friend. Yes. Send her mean messages. I'll kill you. I'm <laughs> Those are for just the mean people, not you. I'm just saying I'm protective of her. Yes. Yes. He is very. Pr- One day we will get into that fun story. Oh, don't. Yeah. Don't even try. <laughs> You'll see. Yeah. Don't try. You won't want to. No. Sorry. I'm very aggressive. We'll have to save that 
story for one of our tea times. I might look like a cute little Jewish fairy on here, <laughs> but you mess with her. He will cut you. Oh, it's more than cut, dear. <laughs> Love you. Love you. We'll see. <laughs> Don't mess with my best friend. Yeah, no. Let's not do that. Mm-mm-mm-mm. So, speaking of killing... <laughs> we have a Feared and Mary kill. Yes! From Miss Marta. Yeah, I'm excited and, about this. And um, this is a difficult one. Ooh. So. <laughs> really? Yes. Okay. So we have Jarl Broom. Jarl yeah. Broom. Uh-huh. Okay, so. Tanta Helene. Taunt- Ugh. <laughs> and Becca Rollins. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, just give me a second. Um, Jarl Broom is which one? I know who he is. I'm just trying to remember. Is he, um, like, how bad, like, which? Isn't that Wyland's dad? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> well, well, I, th- I get confused. Oh, the Grisha, the, yeah, no, yes. I get confused between <laughs> Y'all Broom and then the other guy. Y'all Broom is the, the... um, Yes. Oh, Yarl Broom is the um okay, I got it. Yarl Broom is the very be- okay, he's part of the ice court. Yes, he's a Fury. Druskella. He's a Druskella. <laughs> it I- took me forever. Good lord. My brain is not working properly anyway. I always get confused between um so- some of the names get confused, like I mean, when um the different people that he wants to get like it. I'll have to come up with yeah, the names. There's, yeah. yeah, there's just a lot of names Pekka I get confused. and I, I get confused with Pekka and one of the other. Anyway. Yes, yes. So, Jarl, okay, Tanta, and Pekka. Jarl Broom is, okay, Jarl Broom is the agent of the Druskella. Okay, yeah, bad guy. Okay, and then Tanta Helene, who sells women and is yeah. horrible to an edge. Mm-hmm. And then who? Pekka Rollins. Okay, Pekka Rollins is part is part of the other gang, right? He's not of the dregs, right? Right. Okay. Hey, I'm not good with names. I mean, they're like, I mean, there's so like all the villain. <laughs> there's so many villains, so I get confused between like the different gangs. Yeah, I'm okay. totally not good with names. Holy crap! <laughs> I've just realized after I've remembered all of them that now I've got a feared and Mary kill him. Okay. Pekka is the Dime Lions leader. Okay. Um, something just fell. The one who conned Jordy and Kaz. Okay. So that's Kate. Okay. Caden hates Yalp Room. No. Pekka Rollins. Right. Yeah. Pekka Rollins. Who hates Pekka Rollins? Who hates? Who hates? What did you just say? I, th- I was Kaz. No, you said Caden. <laughs> I said Caden? <laughs> you said. Kata hates Yarl Broom, is what you said. Wow. My, um, okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, we're going to start back. Rewind. All, although we don't have that. That would be amazing, Um, but we don't. Okay, so this is a hard yeah, one. Yeah, I don't want to. We have to. Do anything to any of these people except for kill them. <laughs> okay, so. She sent us a okay, brain twister. Okay, so um, I feel weird <laughs> doing this. What I feel weird about is the fact that my husband's in that room right over there. <sighs> okay, so um, <laughs> I'm kind of um. Okay, <laughs> okay. I'll uh, I'll just feel realistic. I've always had this weird like fetish and turn on for like go, uh, yes. army. Go on. Like, a guy in a uniform? Well, not guys in uniform, but like, you know, like <clears throat> like drill like, sergeant y? Not drill. No, I, I, <laughs> I don't have a fetish for someone in that. I have a fetish for like, you know, just like, I mean, rah, rah. like, I mean, like men that like just like, I mean, <laughs> okay. All right. I don't know. Okay. Like, I mean, you know, they're just. All right. Very manly men that I mean, like, I mean, just. Okay. Yeah. So, you're... <laughs> so I think Clearly. I'm going to have to. And I also like a little twist of bad. So, I mean. 
you <laughs> what what so i'm gonna have to fear in them i'm gonna fear in them because okay. i mean that's just a fear in but i would have to fear in um y'all broom okay yeah so i'd have to fear in <laughs> y'all broom because i mean that'd be a good lay um and i'd have to <laughs> Um, okay, so you can, and then I've got to marry, I'd marry Tanta Helene because I don't think she'd want to have sex with a gay guy. <laughs> um, I think she'd more like just want to put me to work and, um, <laughs> but as a fashion designer, I think I could probably work with, cause I mean, she's got the one with the animal place, like, right. Yes. Like, yeah. So, I mean, I could come up with some great rooms. I'd be like the design motif and like, I would um, decorate the places and like, I'd be their designer. She wouldn't want to have sex with me. I'd go in there flaming. I'd have an umbrella, a fan, a skirt, ballet shoes on. She would not want to touch me. She's an old lady. She need a man. So like I would get her, the farthest away from me. So she would not want to have sex with me. So I could marry her. Um, and I would just bring that whole, like, I would bring it, I'd make it beautiful. Um, the menagerie would be glorious. I'd make it beautiful. I mean, <laughs> I really would. The rooms would have, oh, I could have so much fun designing it. So anyways, that would work. And then um, who do I have left to kill? Pekka. Pekka. Okay. There we go. Got it. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> who you got? Um <laughs> Um I don't even know. It's like rolling the dice and like I don't know. I would I guess I would marry Pekka because he's got the most money, I think. Um and then I would probably um, Bearden, Tanta Helene, and Kill Y'all Broom. Mm. That's probably, I mean, if somebody like was like, you have to, have to. So wait, who are you going to marry? Pekka, because he's got money. Okay. Got to get that coin. True. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All righty. Okay. <laughs> Well, now since our so next week, hold on, it's taking so long. I've gotten logged out of my computer. My husband's like overwhelmed over in the studio section. Okay, so um, okay, yeah. So next week we're gonna be still in King of Scars, obviously. Um, and feel free get tea for yourself. We would love it if you joined us with tea. Get your own favorite tea. And drink it with us while we spill our tea in the very beginning of the show. It's called Tea for Two. That's going to be our part. We're going to get, we're going to actually go graphic. I'm going to make Chris do that. Tea for Two in the beginning. But we're going to be um, doing chapters three and four um, just to take it easy because chapter three has got like 23 pages and chapter four has got 11. So we're going to take it easy. We're not going to go too crazy. So um, that'll be a good idea just to get in there and, um, yeah. Anyways, it's been a wonderful episode to bring back. Thank you so much for hanging in there. Sorry we were supposed to be back last week, but we had to take care of my girl. I couldn't do it without her, and we're so glad she's back. Yay! Oh, my God. <laughs> so we are back. We're going to live this world, and we're going to be here together. And um, we're back in the Grishaverse. And I think, really, this year is going to be great for Grishaverse. Don't yes. you? Of course. So much is going to happen. So it's going to be amazing. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Somebody's had some caffeine. Yeah. Um, I got caffeinated. So. <laughs> okay. Well, I love you guys. It's been such a long time, but we're so happy to be back. So um, anyways, you all have a great week. Read chapters three and four. We'll see you guys back next Friday. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Like, we're at the end of the hour, so my voice is a little husky. A plus. No, no mourners. No funeral.
This has been GrishaCast. Connect with us on the web at GrishaCast.com. Send an email to info at GrishaCast.com. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at GrishaCast. <laughs>